week ago yesterday, I returned from a trip. I was gone for a couple days. And on that trip, I bought something. So see if you can guess where I went. I bought this. Where'd I go? Disney World, the one in Florida. See, my youngest brother and his kids, they go to school down where the Ryder Cup was held. So they didn't have school, so they went down to Disney World, and I got to join them. We had a lot of fun, but the best part was just being with my family, spending time with my nephews and nieces. Anyway, with this hat, as many of you recognize, it's the Mickey Mouse hat. When I wore it, <laughs> I just feel different. <laughs> I just feel like I gotta have a good time. Because I know I look stupid in it, so you gotta have fun. You know, I take it off, yeah, normal, walk around the theme park, put it on, all right, I gotta be goofy, I gotta do things. It's amazing what happens when you put on a Mickey Mouse hat. Now, as Christians, we don't have a special hat to put on. But St. Paul tells us again and again to put on Christ. Hmm. Like in that second reading, when he's writing to Timothy, he says, you know, when you die with Christ, then you're going to live with Christ. It's like there is this flow of grace, or this flow of God's goodness that we are invited to enter into. Think of like if you were to stand in a river. So you're standing in the river, and you recognize that everything is flowing all around you. And, and you can try to stop the river, or you can try to push back against the river. No matter what you do, it's still going to come this way. And that's exactly with God's grace. There is a flow of this goodness all around us. And as much as we try to stop it, or we try not to enter it or deny it, as Paul said, Christ will always be faithful to us, no matter what. Even if we're not. It's, it's trusting in that. Well, a good example of how to do that comes from the Gospel. That classic story about Jesus healing the ten lepers. Now, you've got to think about those other nine lepers. I mean, here they're asking Jesus to heal them. And Jesus says, okay, go and show yourself to the priest. Which, which means, when you show yourself, that you say, okay, I'm cleansed, I'm ready to enter into the temple. But they're walking there, and all of a sudden they go, hey, whoa, I'm clean. Huh, what a coincidence. Isn't that lucky? As opposed to the one guy who recognizes the source of the healing. He recognizes that flow of goodness. And what he does is what we're all invited to do is to give thanks. Now, it's easy to give thanks when things are working well, right? You know, the sun is shining, you're feeling healthy, everybody's getting along, of course we say thanks. But we are invited not just to give thanks when things are going well, but to give thanks in all of the flow of life, even when things aren't going so well, even when there's difficulty, even when we're not feeling at our best is to continue to say, okay, God, I'm still going to give you thanks. It's challenging, but to really enter into that flow, to recognize all the goodness around us, it's even when we're down or we're depressed, to start counting our blessings. Even when we feel overwhelmed or we're worried about something, to start thinking of all the good things that God has given us. So many times when we just feel kind of blah, or start thinking like, wow, what are the things or the people that I take for granted? As opposed to really sitting down and saying, thank you, God. Now, a way to do that is, say, when you do your prayer time. Say your individual time, like here at Mass. Because this meal at the Eucharist is our great prayer of thanksgiving to God for all that we have. But even the other times of prayer, say, like, before you eat... Maybe to pause and somebody say what you're thankful for, or you take turns. 
And then you can jump into some of the classic prayers, like the meal prayer, bless us, O Lord, and on and on. Or tonight, say, like before you go to sleep, just to talk to God and tell God a couple things you're thankful for for the day. It, it's so easy to complain. It's so easy to think of things that are not happening. But there's something about this whole flow that we enter into it. And, and once we start recognizing it and letting go of some of our doubts and worries, that grace continues to surround us. And I'm always amazed when I meet a person who has endured a hardship, say like they have cancer, or they have lost something, let's say a job. And I'm always amazed that even afterwards where they say, you know what, that was the best thing that ever happened to me. I'm like, what? They say, because of that thing, which I thought was going to be terrible, I realize what's important in my life. I'm starting to live deeper. I recognize all the blessings, all the people I've been taking for granted, all the things that I've just been kind of assuming are always there. And this cancer or this loss is a great way to thank God. So, as people of faith, we don't have a magic hat that makes us different. But we are invited, as Paul says, to be different. Put on Christ by our attitudes. Our way of looking at the world. Receiving the Eucharist. Becoming Eucharist. To put on Christ. One of my favorite mystics is a person who lived in the 14th century. I quoted him before. His name is Meister Eckhart. You can Google it. Meister Eckhart. He says that if there's only one prayer that you ever say in your life, or we'll say one prayer that you ever say in your day, and that prayer is thank you, that's enough. 